The Pearl River ranks fourth of all the rivers that empty into the Gulf of Mexico in freshwater discharge. Matter of fact, the estuaries there at the mouth of the Pearl River are very much affected by this fresh water that comes out of the Pearl and empties into the Mississippi Sound. And in our next story, that's where we're going, to the estuaries on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We're going to the Grand Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve and find out a little bit about what they do. This is the Grand Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. This is a, a program that the Department of Marine Resources in Mississippi works on uh, with NOAA, the Office of Coastal Management of NOAA. Most of our projects are aimed at assisting our state in having better coastal management. If we better understand how these edge habitats, these estuaries, how they function, what affects them, um, then we better know how to work with them. So we better know how to develop around them and still let them be the productive habitats they are. We go year after year and we visit the same sites and we measure the same things. And I think that's one unique thing about the Estuarine Research Reserve System is that we can look at long-term change in some of these metrics, whereas a lot of research projects are shorter in duration. You know, we're looking at change over decades. Uh, we have uh, four permanent water quality stations that monitor water quality 24-7. Uh, then we also have uh, weather stations on the reserve that monitor several different uh, weather quality parameters 24-7. We visit five different sites that are located along an elevation gradient. They extend from an upland habitat, more of a freshwater marsh system, all the way down to a low marsh uh, in the estuary. And at each of those, we visit them twice a year now, and we measure elevation change, and we measure vegetation community. We've got seven vehicles and five boats. And as we all know with boats, they take a little attention every now and then. We just try to do preventive and maintenance and keep the oil and changed and the vehicles in, you know, top-notch condition because they're in kind of a harsh environment out here. We might have three out at one time, you know, in different directions with different staff on it, you know, doing research and that sort of thing. So it's just about a constant use for the vehicles and the boats. We do have a 38-foot boat, a custom-built boat for carrying large groups out throughout their estuary. We transport classes out on it, other researchers. It's almost like one of the old landing craft boats. The bow goes down. You can haul equipment out to different places, and depending on what your mission is that day. Well, I grew up out here in this area, and as a kid, we were always out here fishing, crabbing, shrimping. So it is special to me. I like being a small part of this mission to protect it and make it better and show it to other people. There was a lot of different sites that they looked at, but one of the places that they ended up focusing on was a place where there was an existing U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, wildlife refuge, which is where we are now, the Grand Bay National Wildlife Refuge. There was a huge connection to that area because a lot of the local folks that were interested in it, they grew up here. There was a little community here and they wanted to um, preserve the natural habitat in this area. I was born down there, July the 1st, 1932. And, and I try to be a good ambassador for that area, especially the fish and wildlife, because that was one of the things we were raised on. We ate a many a fish during that depression. And since the depression, you're born and raised right there, and you want to preserve it. You see it's getting destroyed, so you want to protect it. This estuary is really productive as a nursery for fish. So all kinds of uh, 
commercial seafood and then also the the prey of the of that commercial seafood grows up in an estuary. The edges are known to be really productive for all kinds of animals and plants. The grasses that we have out there, the, the oysters feed on it, the, the, the shrimp feed on it, and the little minnows, you know, the speckled trout and redfish love the little minnows. The waters of our hand is one of the best places to fish in the country. On the upland side of the reserves, there are wet pine savanna habitats. And wet pine savannas are open grasslands. These grasslands are some of the most diverse habitats on Earth. There's an incredibly high plant diversity in these grasslands. This is one of the last remaining intact and managed by prescribed fires areas so that we can maintain that diversity so that people can come out and see this just incredible diversity of plants and flowers, and insects and birds. It's kind of rare that you have an upland area that transitions all the way into an estuary and marsh without any kind of development. I think it makes an excellent place for us to understand these long-term changes because we have the ability to watch marshes migrate upland as sea level rises. And uh, in a lot of places along the Gulf Coast, there is a barrier of development that prevents marshes from migrating upland. So it's kind of a, a perfect area to understand those changes. A lot of our aim is so that our community has a sense of place and can be connected with the natural habitat in their area. There's a trail um, behind the building, a little boardwalk that goes out to a freshwater marsh. And then there's a beaten trail through the savanna, so you can look at the wet pine savanna in the front. And then there's a smaller trail, um, about a mile loop, that goes through an oak grove called the Oak Grove Birding Trail. And then most of the near is in the marshes. If you have a boat, it's easy to access it. There's a boat launch at the end of Bayou Heron Road. And we do have a blue way. So if you're really an avid kayaker, we have a great um, blue way trail for you to explore. So we have a small interpretive center. It gives some interpretation of the wet pine savannas and the marshland habitats and a, a lot of the uh, plants and animals that you would find there. Um, we have a live exhibit. Um, Toby is our terrapin and um, she lives in a big tank um, and she goes to festivals sometimes too. So we take her out so that um, kids can take a closer look or touch her. We'll go into the classroom. We'll do um, some classroom lessons and then we'll take those kids after their classroom lesson and bring them out here. It's called our On the Road program. Um, and that's a really successful program. We have schools from all across Mississippi that participate. We want people to understand the work that we're doing. One of our major goals is to, for them to appreciate this area and to maybe, you know, want to conserve other areas like we conserve resources at Grand Bay. Wild places are good for people. Being able to come to a wild place and see something that is like your grandparents might have seen it or your great grandparents might have seen it or just to listen to the birds and the animals and the wind and all of that is it's just good for people's souls and so a lot of my interest in restoration of wild habitat is, is for the animals and the plants and the fish um, but it's it's for people it's preserved from now on. And my grandkids can fish down there when they come from Colorado or off Texas. Your kids can come from the Delta and go fishing down there. That's, that's important stuff. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.